What's up guys? I'm super excited because I just got a brand new mechanical keyboard and that's what nerds like me like to geek over is getting a brand new keyboard. Um, my keyboard I have now is this Ducky Mini, uh, what is it? Uh, Ducky One Two Mini. I don't know. It's some it's a pretty good one. It's pretty recent. Um, I like it. I mean, it's a pretty cool keyboard. Um, you know, it has all the little flashy kind of backlight, you know, gizmos and. I mean, this thing has like Minesweeper built into it and a whole bunch of programmable stuff. But I think one thing I went wrong on is it's a mini and the arrow keys are like built into the thing. So I actually configured a dip switch uh, that allows me to hit this uh, cap locks key here to use the um, up and down arrows um, real quickly. So kind of to toggling them, but uh, muscle memory's kicked in now that I'm pretty good at it. But I, for power user like me as a programmer all day, I really don't want to be uh, getting used to this keyboard long term. It's great to just throw my backpack um, if I need to go, you know, on a trip or something like that, and want to have you know, a uh, mechanical keyboard, um, then that would be an option, I guess. Um, but all in all, I really like the quality of the keyboard. And before I show you my brand new Tex um, keyboard that I got, which I want to show you guys and I want to use, I haven't even opened it yet. Um, as far as quality is concerned, one keyboard that I was totally stoked with for a long time was this right here. Uh, this is a Midas keyboard. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. My, um, well, maybe not Midas, but I don't know what exactly. I think it's um, Midas. Midas, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, company out of Canada. Um, this keyboard here uh lasted me probably about i would say a year and it seems to be a common thing i noticed on some uh mechanical keyboard form i can't quite remember the name of the mechanical keyboard form but um uh they uh basically um crap out after a while and uh it sucks because you know, this keyboard is a couple hundred bucks and it's really nice because of the fact that it's ergonomic, you know, so I really like the fact that I can kind of just position it however I want and make my um, hands very comfortable that way. And it even came with like these um, uh, wrist pads too that kind of attach at the bottom with some screws. Um, if I could probably afford to just be buying those keyboards out of, like it's going out of style, I probably would have bought another one of those. But um, I'm really not wanting to just be buying a keyboard every year. Um, you know, it seems silly to me because keyboards should be easy to fix. And when I tore this thing apart, and um, I'll probably leave a link in the description below about uh, the uh, form post I made. But basically in this like mechanical keyboard form, I went and like showed pictures of the PCB and some people were really helpful in telling me how to fix the keyboard because what happened was I, uh, like every other geek out there, have these right? And I shot one of them uh, with that. And um, I noticed there was some kind of gunk in there still that I could still hear clinking around. So I flipped them upside down and kind of like just tapped them lightly together. And 
Uh, the minute I plugged it back in, like there, the period key was like ghosting on me, meaning like it was just like hitting itself whenever the heck it felt like. And um, just no go. Like I was finding myself like deleting extra E's every time I hit the E key. Um, and it was happening all the time. Super, super frustrating since again, like my job is a freaking programmer and I can't be, that's like being an author and you're writing a book and every sentence you write, you have to fix because your keyboard or your type, you know, thing is not working. It's just not, not cool. Right. Um, so, you know, after that quit working, I actually did manage to find a way to kind of fix it. And I fixed a few keys that way uh, by like running extra wire across the board and soldering it. And it worked for a little while. And then I even went to the extent of buying new key switches, which a key switch essentially, if you don't know, um, the cool thing about mechanical keyboards is you can take off the keycaps and reveal the, the key switches underneath. So let me show you here. Uh, sorry, let me show you here real quick. So this is a keycap puller. This is one that came with the ducky that I have. And you know, all you do is you kind of just pull it like this. This is a little hard while I'm holding the camera, but like that. So that little switch in there, you can actually pull out with a switch puller, which is a different thing, but I, I don't have one of those on me at the moment, but uh, there's a switch puller that you can then use to pull the switch out and replace the switch if the switch breaks or whatever. Pretty freaking cool if you wanna customize it. Because with uh, at least um, Cherry MX switches, you can buy different types of switches uh, that basically have different kind of like areas that the uh, switch triggers in. I was saying them directly to you, that's a whole other level of harassment, really. So um, I'm trying to find, cause I actually have a test switcher here somewhere. Um, and uh, so there's a couple of different ones. There's the blue, there's like red, green. Um, shoot, what else? There's like black, um, a whole bunch of different ones. My favorite at first was the black. Um, and I was, I really, there I found it. So, um, here is a key switch tester that you can buy from like um, probably mechanicalkeyboards.com or whatever else. But you can see the different colors underneath the, the actual keycap. So over here is green. Let me uh, push that one here for you. And that, I think, after testing all of the different keycaps or, or key switches out there, I think I like green the best just after testing this. I haven't actually tested on a full size keyboard, but um, the reason being is because um, I like the feel, like you can push it a little bit, but not actually hit the switch until you get kind of, you know, part way through here. Like boom, that's the part. And it has a nice clicky sound. I work from home, so I'm not worried about bothering anybody or anything like that. And I actually this like music to my ears, so I don't mind a loud keyboard. But perhaps probably any of these switches aren't probably going to be the best. You can put dampeners in there. They're like these little O-rings that sit in between there that make them a little bit softer. Uh, but still, probably not the best because uh, people are still going to be hearing you. So maybe... What you would do instead, uh, if you want a quiet keyboard, is just get like one of these, you know, these Mac kind of, I think even the newer ones that are out, um, the, the, the Apple 
keyboard two or whatever the hell they call it. That thing um, I was looking at, but again, the, these switches don't have very much far travel because, you know, they're obviously really, really thin and <clears throat> um, they're kind of a pain in the ass to take off and put back on if you need to fix them. Um, but again, super easy to throw in the backpack, take with me. Um, really good road warrior kind of keyboard. Um, so, you know, that would probably be a better option if you do work in an office or a co-working space or something and you need that extra, um, you know, quietness or whatever. But anyway, um, uh, so aside from the green, there's the white here, the, the Cherry MX white. By the way, there are different key switch manufacturers. Cherry isn't the only one out there. Cherry MX, there's a whole bunch of others. I've heard even some of the switches that don't even get created anymore. I can't remember the name off my top of my head, but like there's certain switches that you can't even get anymore. They don't manufacture them, but those are apparently like really good. So the, this rabbit hole goes deep with all of this. But for me, you know, I'm just trying to find something that I like that I can like fix and not have to like deal with fixing like halfway and like spending more money than I really need to to fix this stupid thing. So I'm ditching the, the whatever, my Thai keyboard. I don't know what the hell it's called, but I'm going with this new text keyboard. I'll show you here in a second. But so this white one, nice soft sound doesn't really have any travel it pretty much instantly clicks unlike the green where there's a little travel this red no real like this one has like a pop feel right here this red nothing like it's just smooth so this might be better if you don't want to click nice it's not very loud so that that no click but no, there's right when you lay your finger on it it's already kind of going down and then this is the black here. I like I liked the black. I had another mechanical keyboard. Um, forgot the name of it, but it was uh, pretty good. It was like a gaming keyboard, though. And it had all black sw switches, and I liked it. It, it was good. But even that uh, keyboard suffered some PCB issues over time. I'm hoping this text keyboard, I don't run into that. Um, but the PCB seems to be laid out really nicely and they even have like a kit that you can solder everything yourself and save some money instead of buying it from them with all the switches already soldered. So that could be a way to save money if you really do want to get this keyboard I'm about to show you. But this is the brown. So this one, uh, this red has a little, it's a little easier to push. Black, no click either. A little harder to push though. And then this brown here has just a little bit of tiny give and then it's like a kind of a click, a soft click. Um, but there is kind of like an area where it does kind of give. And then the blue, uh, loud, like the green switch. But I think really the difference between the blue and the green was uh, the green seemed a little bit stiffer to push. So it seems like that one's just a little hair, a uh, little hair harder to push. Yeah, the blue is definitely easier to push. So I, after testing with that, wanted to go with the green switches. So um, let's go ahead and open up the text keyboard. Um, and uh, it's from Tex Electronics. I'll show you here. This is the um, a guy named Justin. I was following him on Twitter. Seems like a cool guy. Good support so far. Um, Tex Electronics. They're out of uh, Taiwan. So exciting stuff, right? Um, so let me just set up a little tripod here and I'll bust this guy open. 2,000 years later. All right, so let me pop the sucker open. Hopefully I didn't just cut the thing. All right, I'll pack 
packing slip. So let me just show you what I got here. Um, I got the, it's called the Shinobi. Uh, and I got it with the green switches. But I also got an extra keycap set that's blank. So what came on it is the US ASCII. You can get it in a whole bunch of different other varieties. Uh, but I ordered an extra keycap set because um, eventually when I get used to it, it might be kind of cool to just replace all the US ASCII keys with blank keys. So nobody can use a keyboard but me. <laughs> I don't know. Just uh, look cool, I guess, right? And sometimes that's what it's all about, bruh. Bruh. So the, um, what's really interesting, and I have no idea how this is going to work out, but this thing has this um, Bluetooth upgrade kit. So this is a wired keyboard, which I don't mind because I don't really need a wireless. Um, it's not like I'm walking around with my damn, you know, keyboard. But with the upgrade, I figured I might as well try. So here are the blank keys, it looks like. Let's see, what's that factory smell? It smells like plastic. Okay. Uh, what's this? Is this the Bluetooth upgrade? I think this is, yep. Text BLE upgrade. And it comes with a user manual here. It says all these buttons. Button, power button, pair button, press three seconds, uh, keyboard, yeah, some other stuff. May cause notification. May cause BLE upgrade PCBA damage. Please make sure to turn off battery power switch and remove USB cable power before you install the BLE module to the keyboard SATA controller. So turn off the battery and remove the USB cable power. Okay, so I guess it's just saying, don't, 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 don't mess up, bro. Bro. Wow. Things a lot skinnier than I thought, so I guess you take these batteries here and just probably slide them into here. Oh, this is like a, a little spot for the uh, batteries for the Bluetooth there. So two double A's, and then this turns the keyboard into a wireless keyboard. Freaking cool. Um, it looks like there's also something tiny in here. Oh, some, uh, just, uh, screws, probably to screw on the Bluetooth thingamajig. So here's the box. Wow. Nice box. I didn't honestly even expect it to come in a box. Think different, make different. Uh, I don't know if that's a hundred percent how I would have worded it, but sure. Shinobi, look at that. Wow, fancy, fancy. So, looks like packaging looks nice. This here is probably the USB. Some extra keycaps here. Yeah, there's a blue blue enter button I could put on instead of the black one that it's got on there. Looks like I can replace this. Oh, I think you just need to put on the red little dampener here. Oh, look at that! It comes with a keycap puller. Very cool. And then it's got this little thing here that says tax for the wire. Your typical, um, oh, this is a USB-C. That's even cooler because um, it's future-proof, I guess. All right, let's take this thing out. Wow, it's not that heavy. Not as heavy as I thought it would be um, from 
reading the uh, specs on it. And what I'm really hoping is that, because I measured my space that I have, and I'm really hoping that this thing will fit where I want it to go. So there's a form factor, really slim. Oh, with those green switches, I feel it. Oh, it feels so good. Oh my gosh, I could just do that all day. Okay, so what I'm hoping is that this will fit right in my standing desk here, like a glove. So let me move you over. I'm sorry, Ducky, but I have a new lady that is coming home. Look at that, it fits perfect right there. In fact, I actually thought it was gonna be even tighter in here, but I still got some extra space. Anyway, they've got the specs online, but I'm not exactly sure how, why this is, but compared to the Ducky, wow. It is literally the same width as the Ducky Mini, it looks like. That's surprising. I thought it was gonna be a little bit wider. But the whole reason I really wanted to get a new keyboard and I spent I wanna say like 300 bucks on this with the Bluetooth upgrade, with the extra keycaps. You could probably save yourself 80 bucks easy if you didn't get all that. But this keyboard, the reason I really like it is because it's got this little IBM kinda touchpad sorta mouse thing here in the middle that I'm excited to try. And you've got your mouse clicks here, which these actually do not. These are not green switches. I don't know why they didn't put green switches there. That's a green switch, but these aren't. It's kind of upsetting. Um, but uh, wow, I am really stoked to start using this thing, but I don't know if I really want to out the gate start using the Bluetooth. I probably should. Um, but uh, let's take a look at the manual here. So, Tech Shinobi user manual, dip functions without text profile file. Port one on, function description, function control left, control left control function, cannot be used simultaneously. Port two, um, alt left, uh, Enable mouse function, dual function, function track point equals scrolling function, function click middle key, reverse track point scrolling vertical direction, port five, and then dip function with text profile file. Use profile one, two, three, Function layered description. Function up, stop, play. So some basically given some functions. There's the katakana keyboard stuff. Function one through nine, change track point module sensitivity. Please wait five seconds, press or push track point. And then for programmable, go to Shinobi. So I gotta play around with that. Just like how I got the ducky, I went and pulled um, the manual down and it's huge, but uh, I could configure the bounce settings and some other things that were pretty cool to help me get around some issues that I was originally having. Um, so awesome. Well, uh, once I get this sucker all um, working, then, um, I'll report back with how, what I think about it, but so far it looks awesome, and I'm super excited about it, and, uh, I honestly can't wait to use it, because I'm sick and tired of using this little tiny freaking keyboard, and hitting all kinds of stupid function switches, just to move around the arrows. So 
One thing I'm also excited is having to switch back and forth all the time, going like this, da da da, da and then grabbing this thing uh, for the mouse is getting a little tiring. Um, I know you Vim users out there don't have this problem, but I still have to use the mouse every now and then, and it is gonna be sweet to just use this little guy right here uh, and not have to leave the keyboard to use the mouse. So I'm probably just gonna go ahead and use the Bluetooth function. Um, so let me get the batteries thrown in there and install it and um, I'll get back to you on how that went. So a few things I skipped um, was the back. It comes with this really cool hit on the back with this uh, samurai dude that's about to kill you at. And then it's got these little kickstands, classic kickstands. I think even the Ducky Mini has. And I just threw on the Bluetooth uh, connector here and I threw in the batteries. And so this is the power button and here's the pairing. So when you throw the Bluetooth on, uh, the cap lock key starts to tell you that it's waiting to pair um, or it's searching. I'll turn that off. And then here's a USB-C connection. And from reading, it sounds like you can have uh, both the Bluetooth and the USB-C connected. So probably only need to uh, actually turn on the Bluetooth when you need it. Um, and there's some keyboard shortcuts it shows here for just like switching between the Bluetooth and the USB host. So, but it does have a big old warning like, hey, uh, be sure to turn off the battery power on probably the Bluetooth thing itself and remove the USB cable before you install this module because it's basically like a SATA controller. Um, when you look on the back, when you align it up and you slide it in, it's just like a hard drive kind of SATA connection, it looks like. But, um, all right, let me get this thing plugged into my computer and write a few sentences and just get the feel for how I like it. Oh, dude, it works so nice. Let me try to do a click and hold. Yeah, it's just, it's a little too sensitive right now. Like the mouse is flying all over the keyboard, but I can already tell I am gonna freaking love this keyboard. So I think so far I give this keyboard 
a 9 out of 10. Probably the only reason it didn't get a 10 is because I haven't used it enough to really figure out whether I truly like it. I've got to kind of play around with these up here and get a feel for that a little bit and just see what all this is capable of. But this might be a 10 out of 10 if it really does work out well with the mouse function. It's a little quick right now, but I think I can configure that. And the switches, um, everything's working. So that's good. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll do another review later about mouses and my search for vertical mouses. Um, played a lot with the touchpad, the trackpad. I like the trackpad. I like my vertical mouse I have now, but I'll do a more detailed um, overview of that in another video. Just a little update on the uh, keyboard. I really like the keyboard. I think I still hold a nine out of 10 on this, uh, only because I kind of missed the ergonomic of the um, other keyboard I had. But all in all, this keyboard is really solid. I don't use the mouse thing as much as I thought, but maybe that's just because I haven't gotten used to the keyboard enough. Um, but, uh, yeah, everything's working out really well with this keyboard and I totally dig it. Um, so I approve of this message. Subscribe to our channel, baby. And give a like, and give a subscribe to our channel. I like, you heard that.